So is the market saying globalism is beating Trumpism? You know, over the weekend, Apple CEO Tim Cook spoke in China, where the company's opening a new research center, and took on the notion that globalism is something that should be rejected. Speaking for almost an hour, Mr. Cook acknowledged that gains are, uh, aren't always evenly distributed within certain nations, but he did proclaim that globalism is, quote, in general, great for the world. Cook went on to warn the worst thing would be to be to to be because of it, it didn't always help everyone is to sort of say the whole thing was bad and to do less of it because the reality is is in his mind that you can see that countries in the world that isolate themselves that it's been no good for their people well today the world's richest man and globalist bill gates met with president trump and while details have yet to be released a spokesperson for the gates foundation emailed that the conversation would focus on developing initiatives for global health development and also domestic education. By the way, Apple shares, they hit an all-time high today. And there were additional market signs that maybe globalism is winning. By the way, when is bad news good news? Well, when the bad news is the best news that you've had in a long time, Caterpillar. Their worldwide sales are down just 1% in February. That's the best monthly performance since December of 2012. In fact, there's three consecutive monthly improvements suggesting something of an inflection point that began between November and December. But here's the thing. The strength is concentrated in Asia Pacific, where construction was up 52%. Their resource business in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East up 16 percent. We continue to also, I do, believe that this stock is extremely undervalued. I know some of you have been frustrated with it. Forget about that tax rigging thing. I think the stock as a buy is going to go well north of 100. Uh, by, by the way, the stock market is also talking about this globalism thing. If you take a look at NASDAQ, which is on fire, up almost 10 percent for the year, while American-centric Russell 2000 is struggling, barely up 2 percent. Overall, I think the broad market is stalled, and the question right now is, what is the message of the market? Wall Street Journal's senior video reporter, Shelby Holiday, joins me now. First, on the globalism thing. The market is suggesting invest in globalism. It's going to win despite the rhetoric. What do you think? I agree with you, and if you look at some of the top companies, the biggest companies by market cap, they're global companies, ExxonMobil. We heard from Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook the other day talking about the benefits of globalism. Now Tim Cook, CEO of Apple. You know, the biggest and best companies in the United States do better when they have global supply chains and they sell products all over the world. So it's hard to say that nationalism is better. However, it is politically popular, and, and, and it looks like what people want is a balance. Right. We don't want to cut but ourselves off from the that, world, right? we could to but we do want to protect point, our have, workers. Have, have, uh, economic nationalism there's a way we can improve the lives of americans because even even in, in china uh, you, you saw what tim cook admitted mm -hmm. that within certain nations even capitalistic nations uh, it's, it's been disproportionate so the executives at ibm are flying in private jets and yet you have a factory worker in, in iowa who's been out of work for four or five years right their job went to china which is a big problem so we can and fix that this is why we have trade agreements so that you all ch try to achieve uh, you try to uh, play by the same rules you try to have relatively same tax structures, you're not manipulating currencies, you're not using uh, cheap labor, unfair labor. So trade agreements are important. I think we're going to see a lot of bilateral trade agreements, but I, this weekend it's hard to say that globalism's winning when Se Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin was able to take language out of a G20 communique uh, saying that we will avoid protectionism. That, that was essentially a win for nationalism this weekend. And it didn't move the needle yet in terms of trade right. or actual policy, but Market overall stalling here just a little bit. Uh, the, the concerns are that maybe the Trump agenda won't get through as quickly as possible. I still think Wall Street believes it will happen because mm -hmm. we haven't sold off completely, but we have clearly stalled with the big board. What do you think? Right. And uh, analysts say we're in a wait and see mode. I would absolutely agree with that. My dad always uses car analogies when he talks about the market. So to use my dad's language, you know, the, it's like investors just pedal to the metal after the election went 90 on the highway, and all of a sudden they're starting to see speed bumps or traffic jams. Uh, they're, maybe they're running out of gas. So they see that Donald Trump's policies might be running into trouble. Nothing has been rejected of the Donald Trump agenda, but nothing has been passed. So at this point, they're crossing their fingers, but they may have gotten a little bit ahead of them. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest to them that they stay on the highway. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Let's hope you, so. If you want to put it in neutral for a minute, that's on you. But <laughs> please, don't get off this bad boy because there's a lot of fun riding on the road ahead. By the way, I do have some, uh, some bad news to pass on. Billionaire philanthropist and banker David Rockefeller 
died in his sleep this morning at age 101. He was the last surviving grandson of John D. Rockefeller, the tycoon that started the Standard Oil Company. According to Forbes, David Rockefeller was worth $3.3 billion at the time of his death, making him the world's oldest billionaire.